Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am, as always, happy to be with you, hoping you're having a great day, whatever that day entails. It is a lovely, sunny day here in Northern California, which, of course, means that the pollen is going crazy, as it always does in the spring, and so my sinuses are not happy, but... What else is new? <laughs> it wouldn't I just feel like it wouldn't be a full day if my sinuses weren't doing something productive. At least something about me is productive, right? Yeah, let's let's go with that. At any rate, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you're ready for another author interview. As I mentioned at the end of the last episode, we are switching now to a collection of short stories by Heather Mateos Sappenfield. The book is called Lyrics for Rock Stars. And let me give you the description on the back. Now, I do have an ARC copy of this. I was sent an ARC copy of this, although it is out now. Um, but so if... If you have this book or if you see this book and what's on the back of the book that you see is different than mine, that's the reason. But the back of my book says, This prize-winning collection brings to life skiers, ranchers, cyclists, suffragettes, tourists, supermodels, dead pigs, burrow racers, religious beet farmers, immigrant miners, scorned lovers, penitent centenarians, and musicians. Some historical, some contemporary, its stories revel in their western settings, as varied as the region's landscape. Yet each story explores the way society's values clash with our individual desires, compelling us, despite tears or laughter, laughter, to weave our lives through these opposing forces, often creating not a lifeline, but a noose. Sounds a little a little dark there at the end, huh? Uh, yeah, it, this, so this is a collection of uh, 17 short stories, I believe. Maybe I have that number wrong. Let me just double check. But they are divided into, the book is divided into two sec- sections, Songs of Innocence and Songs of Wisdom. And um, in Songs of Innocence, you get... Uh, for me, I felt like Songs of Innocence tended to be more toward more more like songs of loss of innocence and and you can tell from the the description on the back of the book that th- there is a lot going on with these stories that there is a lot of human emotion and life experiences and just situational experiences packed into these stories as is often the case with short stories because you do have to really economize your storytelling because it is a short story So yes, uh, there are 17 short stories within the book, Um, again, divided into two sections, Songs of Innocence, Songs of Wisdom. For myself, personally, I think I enjoyed the second half of the book, Songs of Wisdom, more than the first half of the book. I'm not saying I did not enjoy the first half of the book, but because it was Songs of Innocence, and, and as I said, it felt like Songs of the Loss of Innocence, it was sometimes difficult for me particular, particularly to have those experiences with the children as they were kind of losing that sense of innocence, realizing what happens in the world, realizing that parents are fallible or life is not maybe what they expected it to be. And so that that was a little more a little more difficult for me. You know, as you know, I always relate everything to my nieces and and the children in my life and so that was difficult Uh, second half felt felt more comfortable for me (laughs) I mean still it wasn't things that that are necessarily enjoyable but things that we all go through and 
questions that we ask, experiences that we might have. So that that was the second half and uh, felt a little bit more of my speed for reading. As you know, I struggle with short stories. They are not my favorite genre. I am learning to appreciate them more than I did before. But uh, as I've said before, I, I always want more. If I fall in love with characters, then I want more from those characters. And short stories just give me that little snippet. And so I'm like, yes, but I want more. One thing, I, one more thing I will say about the book is that Heather did send me a link to a, an audible copy of the book. And so I was able to listen to the stories, which is something that I enjoy doing. As you know, I love listening to audiobooks. But the author, not the author, the narrator for this audiobook is Michael Crouch. And I thought that name sounded familiar when Heather mentioned it. And it's because he has narrated some of the Percy Jackson series. And so I had, once he started talking, like, yes, I know this voice. I absolutely know this voice. And so I'm used to him in, in that kind of young adult mode with uh, all the different voices that he does for Percy Jackson but he really does an incredible job with these stories in terms of going from those songs of innocence with with children as young as you know five or six and and can making a making me believe that he was that age you know sometimes it's it's hard to do a child's voice as an adult but he goes from young children to uh, a a the oldest man, uh, the oldest living man who's over a hundred in one story and he is convincing in all of them. So I really enjoyed his narration of lyrics for rock stars. I'm going to go ahead and turn it now over to the interview so that Heather can talk more about the book rather than me. So again, the book is called Lyrics for Rock Stars. The author is Heather Mateus Sappenfield. Hi, Heather. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sarah. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. I am happy to have you here. We are here to talk about your collection of short stories. The book is called Lyrics for Rock Stars. But before we get to the book, if you would take a few moments to share a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Mm, okay. Um, well, I live in Vail, Colorado, right in the heart of the Rocky Mountains at about 8,000 feet. And I live in a 600 square foot log home. Um, I guess some would call that a tiny house, um, and I, we love it. Um, my husband and I live here, um, and we're about mm, maybe 150 yards from Gore Creek. Um, and I have a riding loft in this little tiny house. It's up up above, and that's where where I do my writing and where I'm talking to you from right now. And then as far as who I am, um, I've always um, been a very athletic person as well as intellectual, kind of divided right down the middle like a good Gemini should be. Um, and so I've always been sort of an adventurer and had a lot of things that I've done athletically or physically, um, and like, you know, teaching skiing for Vail Resorts or ski touring um, in the backcountry in the wintertime or mountain bike racing. Or years ago, I did something called the Race Across America on a women's cycling team where we went from San Diego all the way to Atlantic City, New Jersey. It was a relay race. Um, and I've really enjoyed that, those aspects and what I learned about myself through that. But in recent years, I've really come to appreciate, I think it's, from all the writing and all the time I spend with characters, um, sort of the internal adventure also of looking within and just finding um, the out things about yourself and facing challenges within yourself. And I think a lot of times we adventures, we head out or do things like that, no matter what it might be, you know, we, cho we choose some sort of a physical challenge to try to get into that internal space. So as a writer, that really fascinates me and um, yeah, just how we all are working and striving toward that understanding or avoiding it. Oh, exactly. Well, yeah. thank you for that. I, yeah. I actually, I, I feel like I have a million questions about what it's like to live in a 600 square foot house, but uh, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably not the place for that. <laughs> you know, you watch, you watch shows like tiny house nation and, and I'm always amazed at, at how efficient people can make their tiny spaces. So exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's like living uh, on a boat. We just don't have anything extra. <laughs> 
Uh, yep, but you you know you have your loft, which I think is cool. So you've got a place for yeah. writing and yeah, um, yeah, excellent. Well, uh, again, the book is a collection of short stories. It's called Lyrics for Rock Stars. Can you give kind of an overview of the collection as a whole? Well, there um, are seventeen stories in the collection, and it's called Lyrics for Rock Stars but it is divided into two sections, Songs of Innocence and Songs of Wisdom. And the Songs of Innocence start, it kind of goes through um, children, youngest into teens, and then Songs of Wisdom deal with adults. And um, all of the stories, again, kind of look into, with through dysfunctional families or struggles, um, how we grow and become the people we are. And it sort of, I hope, by the end, sort of revolves back on itself as far as a collection um, with the, the question of what truly is wisdom and what do we decide is wisdom and, and, and how do we incorporate that into our lives. Um, and, and several of the stories his, are historical. I am a Colorado girl, and I absolutely love the West. And so it is very much rooted in place. Um, place is a character within the entire collection. And if you see the cover, it's actually the skyline of Denver with the Rocky Mountains behind it at sunset. I'm really happy with the cover. It turned out so beautifully. Um, However, I was in um, the Las Vegas area a couple of weeks ago driving through Henderson, and I looked, and who knew, like Las Vegas, and then there were these beautiful snow-capped mountains behind it, and I thought, wow, that looks kind of like Denver, and I know Salt Lake can look that way as well, so I think it really speaks to the West overall, and, and, and is a tribute to this area as well. Yeah, I, I actually feel a little sad because I, I have an ARC copy, so I do not have, um, I don't have oh, cover art. It's just the plain uh-huh. But I did, I looked it up, so I, I've seen, uh-huh. I've seen the, the final product and it is, it is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica Bell designed that. I think she's in Britain, um, but she did a beautiful job. Yeah. I agree. See? Art copies are cool and all, but um, sometimes you don't get the cover art, and then you're sad. <laughs> you can always look it up online, which is what I did. But uh, it is it is a little strange to get a book that just has a white cover and some really basic some really basic font. Um, but the 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 actual cover is beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and take our second. No, not our second, our first break of the podcast. I'm way ahead of myself today. We're gonna take our first break of the podcast when we come back. Heather will be talking more about her short stories, lyrics for rock stars, what was the inspiration behind the collection, how she decided which stories to include, etc. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Heather Mateus Sappenfield. We are talking about her collection of short stories called Lyrics for Rock Stars. You, you've kind of answered this already with the two parts, Songs of Innocence, Songs of Wisdom, but um, did you have an initial inspiration for the, the stories or the collection? <laughs> no, you know, so I have written this collection, but I also write novels. And um, so 
so these stories, uh, let me backtrack. Um, this book has been 20 years in the making. And I wrote the first story shortly after I resigned from my teaching position at high school, language arts, to stay home with my daughter because she had started speaking with the Australian accent of her daycare lady. And I thought, uh oh, better stay home. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's I hilarious. Um, and so she, as she was taking her first steps, I was taking my first steps as a writer. And they were really scary for me because it's what I ultimately wanted most in life. Um, and so the stories, as far as their arc, sort of reach and match sort of my growth through that adult phase of life from being a mother up through, you know, all the different marriage things. Some of them are rooted in my experience. Some of them I heard about or witnessed, you know, those things, those obsessions that stay with you as a writer that you need to work through. Um, and so the first, the very first story I wrote was called Coloring Beyond the Lines. Um, and it's about a mother who just fritzes and takes off to find some wild horses. Um, and you know, that, that was very much, you know, just one of those tough days, your mom at home and you're thinking, what have I done? I've given up my career. Here I am. Um, and, and it just, all of the stories sort of came from things that I heard about that fascinated me or that really resonated, or I thought, oh, you know, one of them about a widow, um, who has an encounter with a bear, um, and she's lost her husband kayaking. I had a, a girlfriend who lost her husband ice climbing and she handled it so stoically and so beautifully. And it just it stuck with me for years. I knew I would write about that at some point. Um, and, and simultaneously, you know, if you bring things, elements together as a writer, I also had had been out jogging behind my house or trail running. And I was coming down um, trying to avoid a storm and literally just out the corner of my eye saw this big brown thing moving barreling along, um, you know, down across the mountain. And I stopped and watched, and it was a huge male bear, a boar. It went down and up and over and across the trail in front of me. And we were both fleeing the storm. But if I had stopped, we would have definitely had a close <laughs> a close encounter. And so those two elements kind of came together in the story. So each story is something from living in this region, um, that speaks to the whole sort of thematic arc um, of how the stories are shaped there. I was really hoping you were going to say it was Sasquatch, but okay, uh, a bear, that's, that's dramatic <laughs> enough. <laughs> Almost oh, having it. You huge, that bear. Oh, so okay. good. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you avoided a direct encounter with the bear. Yeah, um, me too. So the, the, there's two sections, Songs of Innocence and Songs of Wisdom. Where then does the title come from, Lyrics for Rock Stars? So Lyrics for Rock Stars, there's a, there's a title story, um, and it's actually about um, a pregnant gold digger who's um, vacationing. She's from Chicago, and they're vacationing where her husband's family goes every summer up high in the Rocky Mountains in the little town called Silverville, which is modeled after many of the mining towns in Colorado. So I'm hoping that you kind of envision any one of the many different towns that we have here. Um, and she realizes on this trip the error of her ways and, um, you know, wants to leave her husband, really struggles with what she's going to do. And she ends up meeting what she assumes is just a singing hippie who's fishing on this river and and decides she wants to run off and and marry him or whatever he he just he gives her a spark of intuition that helps her see reality and it's funny that story i thought for the longest time being a mom i was identifying with the pregnant mother but this is when the collection actually really came together um which is only a few couple years ago, um, I realized that I actually was more identified with that singing hippie <laughs> because they have this exchange. Um, I can read it, the short exchange to you if you like. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, so she's sitting with him and she's talking to the singing hippie and she's realized that he's actually a famous songwriter. 
She looked at him. So you're famous. You write songs. Even in this light, he was wiry, and he wore a T-shirt that read, Let Love Rule. He reeked of marijuana. Tuned some, lyrics mostly. For rock stars, people I've heard of? Stars, sure. Do you need anything? Like who? He sat down facing her and took in her proportions. You're a mini cooper stretched into a caddy. No wonder you're revving so hard. Oh, I forgot to mention, she's going into labor. Um, people I'd hear on the radio? Well, I juice out my passions, my obsessions, and they breathe each day on the radio, live night after night after night on tours. I don't know if I'd like that, turning on the radio and hearing my life. He shook his head, stubble furred his cheeks. I dig it. It makes me part of each body that grooves to my beat. And when I heard that passage, I realized that each of these stories was basically my lyrics. Um, and as a writer, you put out, you know, you pour your heart out and you send it out into the world. And every reader reads that story and interacts with you in, 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 a, in some way. And granted, they bring to it their own experience of the story, but they bring to it their own tune as well. And so for each reader, that story is something completely different. And it just made me really, that's when I knew what the title was and how it all needed to fit together. Yeah. I like it. That's I, I really like that, that analogy and, and how the, the title of the book came about, because it has to be weird to work so hard on something, you know, whether it's short stories, whether it's a full length novel, and then just send it out into the world to be right. um, <laughs> read and picked yeah. apart and discussed yeah. in ways that you maybe had never even thought of before. Right, right. Yeah, I'm always surprised. Uh, and it's funny, I've had so many people come up to me or write me and, and and say, oh, this is my favorite story, or I love this story. And I'm always so surprised, you know, about, like, I don't, I mean, the one story in the beginning, one story in the end, you know, everybody likes different stories and identify with them for different reasons. Sure, yeah. Um, we, we've talked about a couple of the stories, but there, are there any of the 17 that you would particularly like to highlight? Um, I'm not particularly. I mean, I love them all. There's a couple of them that are humorous that I really enjoy. I think, you know, we, our riot books and our stories are a bit like children, and I love them all. Um, I do especially love the final story, The Oldest Living Man in America. Um, the, the, the collection is dedicated to my grandfather, who actually was the oldest living man in America for a time. And... Um, it's, this isn't my grandfather by any means, but, but, you know, it made me think about, wow, the amount of history that he had seen. And, you know, for this particular character, it stretches from the Civil War all the way to the moonwalk, the first man on the moon. And he's watching that as he's narrating the story. And I think I love the story because it reaches across all of that and because of the grace that he finds, but also because I think as far as the story at the end does, I hope, a lot of work with forgiveness and sort of curving the collection back on itself so that you can look back at the stories and think, huh, and reassess them. Thank you for that. I um, yeah. That's so cool about, about your grandfather. I, I remember reading the, the dedication and, and seeing that he had been at one point the oldest man in America. My, my yeah. husband had the similar uh story it's his mother's great grandmother i think but she lived to be 117 uh -huh. and, and wow. her story, i mean yeah yeah <laughs> but her her story also started you know in the she was a slave and then um there's a picture of her with my mother-in-law when my mother-in-law is about five wow. and it's, it's so cool um wow so i just i, I love that the, the amount, like you said, the amount of history that had to have been seen by this person. Yes. And, you know, one of the things and one of the themes of the book that fascinates me, especially in the West, is how we can move through history without even really fully realizing it and be at a place, you know, for I don't know how many times. And then all of a sudden you realize what happens there or you learn something about it. For example, the story clan. 
um, in the collection takes place on Table Mountain or Table Mesa outside of Denver, which um, back in the day was one of the meeting places for the Ku Klux Klan here. And we had a huge Ku Klux Klan um, community, I hate to say it. And, and they would gather there and, you know, burn crosses and, and all that at night. And I never even knew that. When I finally heard that, I was so shocked. And I knew, okay, I have to write about that somehow. And, and how that, oh, the aha moment of that. Yeah, although I, I keep seeing um, various memes on social media lately that say something along the lines of, yeah, I'm, I'm tired now of living through historically significant events. <laughs> like, <laughs> the events of the last year, people I are know, like, yeah, right? I'm, I'm done now. Can we move on? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're definitely doing that right now. Yeah, I will say one thing for the last uh, year and a half or so, we've definitely had some historic events and some things that have gone on, whether in the world, in the U.S., in our own lives. It's been crazy, and I'm ready for something a little more normal, although I'm not sure anymore what normal is. Not sure I ever knew what normal was, but we're going to go ahead and take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about some of Heather's other writings. She does write across genres, so she's got a wide variety. Wide variety. <laughs> I just made a new word, array. See, I can't even say it, variety and array. She's got a wide variety of different genres that she writes in. Let's take that break so I can see if I can get my words back. You are listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Book Review Podcast. I am your tongue-tied host, Sarah, who is desperately trying to um, get through this interview with actual words and not things that I've made up. Let's, let's go back to the interview so that Heather can do more of the talking. In terms of writing, I know that you are, uh, your website says that you're a journalist. You mentioned that you write novels. What draws you to writing short stories? I think that when when a story comes to me, I sit with it for quite a while and get a feel for what it needs to be. And if it's shorter and it, it's just this moment in time when the character will be going through something and it's just more impactful and more powerful to write about that moment, then that's a short story. Whereas if it's something that would be broader and reaching where, where the, you, we need to follow the character's journey over a period of years or through a longer stretch of time, then that's going to end up being a novel. Um, so that's what determines whether what it is um, as far as the form. But, you know, I also write across genres. So I write for adults, but I also have two young adult novels. And I have a middle grade novel um, which is coming out in February, February 1st, it's releasing, of 2022. And so I also listen to the narrator and uh, 
how the narrator seems to want to tell the story and then kind of assess how the story will be interact with the reader and then decide from there what the genre will be. Oh, fun. I, I love that. And uh, yeah, I've always been fascinated by people who either A, write across genres or B, stick to one genre. Like <laughs> on certain days yeah. I'd be like, how can you only stick to one genre? And other days I'd be like, how can you not stick to one genre? So um, that's very cool. The, the, can, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the young adult story? Can you talk a little bit about the the, the storyline in that one? Well, I have two young adult, published two young adult novels. Um, the first one, when I was teaching high school, actually, I lost three students to suicide. And I, and oh. that was something, that was my first book that I wrote about, you know, this girl in the first chapter actually attempts suicide and fails. And then she wakes up in the hospital and realizes how much she's hurt the people around her. And she never really considered that. And so it's how mm -hmm. she almost becomes sort of a mystery novel as she figures out how she got to that place and how she's going to work her way out of it. Um, and that's called The View from Who I Was. And then the the other young adult novel I wrote was actually a Colorado Book Awards finalist, and it's called Life at the Speed of Us. And that has a lot of snowboarding and skiing and on-the-mountain things, and it um, has time travel in it as well. And the girl has lost her mother and ends up time traveling back inadvertently um, to the days when the Ute Indians used to inhabit this valley before the ski areas and all of that. And it's actually the days when they were being forced out of these ancestral lands. And so she has this contrast between being with them and they're starving and being hunted down to coming back in time and walking into a lodge and someone's offering her a tissue and, you know, she's going to buy a brownie, like the contrast of those modern times versus that and 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 that um definitely gives her perspective and helps her move along as well so it's that one's also historical um and investigating the bale actually the ski area here was formed by a, a huge fire um that was blamed on the utes um a sort of pr smear in my opinion back in the day um and um so it, it was. It, it investigates that as well, and, and how that happened, and, and how how the fire started. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, did you do any particular research for the the short story collection? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, the stories deal with several different historical um, periods. So, you know, and sometimes they were generated by discovering something from history. But I'm always really careful, at least for me, you know, everybody has their process. But for me with history, I tend to look at the initial facts and kind of get a feel for where things are and touch points. And then I like to write the story and then go back and do a lot more research. Um, because for me, that tends to um, make the characters more real and their actions more real. I, if, I find if I've done too much research, sometimes I'm writing toward the history instead of toward the character's journey. Working on anything now that you can or would like to talk about? <laughs> well, you know, I am in, I'm in that place. I think writers kind of dread it overall. So I have lyrics just came out and then I, my middle grade book is just heading now into production with Fitzroy Press. And then I have a novel that I finished that um, is complete. It's ready for market and it's um, an upmarket literary humorous fiction book and it's all polished and it's beautiful. And so actually right now I'm just literally starting a brand new novel and um, it's so that transition from writing that is so polished and ready and then into that place where you, you've got to give yourself permission to write really crummy sentences and, and just find new stuff and, you know, take everything out of the cupboards and throw it onto the page as far as what fits with the story. It's such an interesting transition and it's always kind of hard for me to move from the one to the other. But that's where I am and I'm starting this new new novel. I would imagine that is both exciting and slightly terrifying. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just it's such a transition. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a, a plotter or a pantser when it comes to your how, how you how you write? Well, you know, it's interesting. So I am dyslexic, and because because of that, I don't. I guess it's one of the traits that some dyslexic people have, but stories tend to come to me pretty fully formed um and they're not like really super specifically plotted out but i have a really general sense of where things are going the whole thing and so i tend to um pants it right through as far as like drawing and what's out of my head and then i go back and i really look at the plot and how things are fitting together and then if there's historical things or research to be done, then, that, then that's added at that point. Yeah. Interesting. I'm, I'm curious as uh, someone who is dyslexic, how, how has that um, either affected or uh, positively or negatively how you write? Well, I think in many ways it has helped me tremendously with creativity because I'm such a big picture person. Um, and it helps with that a ton. And then it kind of keeps me from getting into that sort of narrow editing phase that can kind of hold you back in the creating phase. And then when I do move into the editing, editing phase, it, it can be tough for me initially. But I think I've trained myself to be so absorbed in it that I overcompensate. And I tend to be really like, Oh, I take craft to the next extreme because it is, you know, because I tend to see words, put words backwards or put sentences out of order. So for me in the editing process, I really, really, really take my time and I'm very, very careful. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, I um, have a, a, several people that I know and, and one in my family and just learning how how they see things differently than maybe how I see them and you know how you can yeah. look at a word four or five times and it 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 says one word you're you're convinced you know that word and then somebody <laughs> comes along and says no that word is this right so right. yeah it's just it's it's an interesting it's an interesting way the brain works uh-huh definitely so sounds like you've been writing for quite a while in one way or another. Is it something that you've always wanted to do? From the time I was a little girl, I don't know why, but I just knew I was going to be a writer and live in the mountains. And that here I am. And I don't know. You know, it just amazes me how life can turn out. It is something that I always I always wrote and I always knew that I wanted to be a writer and when I went to college I was a journalism major initially and then I switched and um, got my teaching certificate and, and English degree and so I taught English for a while but when I resigned and stayed home I became a journalist and then you know it took a lot of courage for me to really jump into writing fiction and because I wanted it so much and I was afraid um, and so but I did I gave it a shot and um, you know it, it wasn't easy I'll say that because I you know I, I think a lot of the things that I had learned as an English teacher did not work to my benefit as an author and I had to unlearn some of the ways that I looked at story and um, and at books and creation of stories, I made a lot of assumptions as a teacher that I don't think are necessarily true as an author. Um, and so that was one aspect. And then I ended up actually, to really help me along, ended up going and getting my master's of fine arts at Pacific University. And that really turned the tables for me. And that's when my career started to take off. Thank you for that. Out of your own experience, mm -hmm. then, do you have advice for aspiring authors? I do. And I think my advice, you know, everybody has their own way of creating a book. And I honor anyone who can actually write a short story or get a novel written because it's hard. 
it's not easy to sit down and make yourself do it and get it out there. But my advice, in all honesty, is to listen to what the story needs to be. Not get caught up in, okay, what else is out there and what's this and what's this and what's this and what's this, this, but really what's the story that you have inside you? And to write that story first and then to take a look at what you've written and say, okay, what do I have here? What is this? Um, And then to approach getting it published based upon the story being what it needed to be first. Um, And then probably it'll be a much more authentic piece of work and true to you. And maybe as, as you look at it, you see elements that might need to be tweaked or whatever to fit the market. But originality, for originality to really be there, I think you really have to pay attention to yourself and, and what really needs to come onto the page rather than necessarily the market. Okay. Last break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit more about Heather's advice for aspiring authors. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you. of my interview with author Heather Mateus Sappenfield. Before the break, we were talking about her advice for aspiring authors and writing what you want to write, not necessarily writing what's popular or, you know, write write the story that's in you to write. And we'll go ahead and get back to that conversation since we pick up kind of in the middle of it and in the middle of my response to Heather's last comment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and especially just because you were in a phase where young adult vampire books are popular doesn't mean that's the book that you're meant to write. <laughs> right, right. You know? And, and Even you, though know, you, you could write that book. Um, you know, someone could definitely, you know, do I want to write that vampire book? And here I go and, and write a book and, and get it published maybe, but maybe, but I I don't know. I find it more... Um, gratifying to be true to, to the stories and to write the story, write these stories that come that are authentic and unique and not generated by necessarily wanting to make a lot of money. Right. Yep. Absolutely. When you take the time to read for yourself, not doing research or something, do you have favorite <laughs> authors and genres? You know, so I have, um, it's a thing I discovered um, in the last couple of years, which is, and I think it's true for a lot of people, is that I'm sort of a type of reader, not necessarily across genre. And the type of writing that I enjoy is really well-crafted, fairly literary, but not over the top, you know, kind of on that literary line um, of just over from upmarket and into literary, um, really nicely plotted with true characters. And if a story has that, it doesn't really matter whether it's mystery or young adult or middle grade um, or literary, I'm probably going to enjoy it. And so as far as favorite writers oh and thus I'm that kind of a writer um so I write across genre but I you'll get that from me you know as far as it'll be really well crafted and um you know and that's I I work hard to craft it let's put it that way I don't know if it comes out that way in the end but I hope so 
and, you know, strong characters and things like that. Um, as far as favorite books, I just uh, recently read Migration by Charlotte McConaughey and was stunned by that book and loved it. Um, I just finished Circe by Madeline Miller, and I loved that book as well. Um, and I love Gail Honeyman and Eleanor Oliphant. It's completely fine. But then Louise Penny got me right through the most of the pandemic. With I went all through the Inspector Gamash books, and I really enjoy her writing. Um, and then, you know, again, crossing that boundary, there's um, Patrick Ness, who wrote A Monster Calls, you know, in, in, as far as middle grade fiction. But I think everybody should read that book. Oh. It's so beautiful. And then Neil Stristerman's Challenger Deep, that's that's a piece of art, that book. I'm glad you mentioned Louise Penny because it reminded me that I she's on my T B R list and I need to oh. I need to get back to that. I keep I keep hearing so many good Shoot. things about her. She's wonderful so. and I literally just saw in the news in Publishers Weekly today that she and um Hillary Clinton are going to write a book together. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Um, right. The way Bill did um, with James Patterson, she's going to do one with Louise Penny. Cool. I don't think yeah, – some, I, I, I sometimes wonder if James Patterson is humor or if he ever sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. The amount, of, the amount of content that he puts out. Um, uh -huh. I know you have a website, so if you can share your website as well as where people can interact with you on social media. You bet. Um, they can find me at heathermateusappenfield.com. And social media, um, uh, Facebook, I'm at Heather Mateu Sappenfield, as well as on Instagram. And then on Twitter, I'm at Alpine Heather. Oh, and I also wanted to be sure to mention um, the audiobook of Lyrics for Rock Stars is unbelievably good. Michael Crouch, who's one of the best in the business, did the voices. And he literally, from an 8-year-old girl to that 109-year-old man, it's unbelievable the job he did um, narrating it. So highly recommend. Nice. Thank you. I, I love audiobooks, so I'm always glad mm -hmm. to hear when, when there's an audiobook version. Yeah. Um, and thank you also for the for the social media Cover uh, Alpine Heather is a little easier to say than uh, your full name. <laughs> that's, that's a mouthful. I thought I thought my hyphenated last name was long, but <laughs> well, you know, I took that name. At, I started using Mateus in my writing name after my grandfather passed away, and that's the Americanized version of of, the, of my maiden name, his last name. Mm. And I just felt really strongly about taking that back. Yeah. And it's um, Azorian, and um, they came as migrant, you know, they came as migrant workers and mm. to the United States and actually were indentured servants in Hawaii for Dole, picking pineapple, and then Dole sponsored their arrival in the United States, California, Orange County. And oh, wow. I just felt strongly that they should not be ashamed and not have to change their name and, and um, yeah. So I took it back. Absolutely. I love that. Well, Heather, we've talked about um, a variety of different things so far, but is there anything that we haven't covered, especially as pertains to lyrics for rock stars that, that you wanted to mention at this point? You know, you had asked about short stories, and there's one thing that I would say about short stories that – is different from novels in that in a short story every sentence really counts and I enjoy writing at that level where every single sentence needs to be working toward one specific destination um, and within this collection it's interesting then when you put a story within a collection each sentence I'm hoping is one, advancing the story itself, two, advancing the themes or messages of that story, and then three, advancing the overarching message of the collection. And so it's really kind of cool how short story collections can operate on so many levels. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of them are 
you know, some of them are just sort of a, a collection of stories that, that maybe don't have a lot to do with one another, but there's, I think mm-hmm. even with those, there's still connections that you can find um, yeah. within because yeah. they are written by the same person. And so there's going to be, yeah. there's going to be some threads that, that connect things. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to thank you so very much for taking the time out of your your day um, to go to your loft and talk to me. I, I I don't know. I just like I just like that you're in your loft. But uh, thank you so I much do. for talking. <laughs> thank you for for talking to me about lyrics from your loft. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you again to Heather for not only talking to me about her short stories, uh, her collection of short stories, lyrics for rock stars, but also about some of her other writings, about writing in general, etc. Thank you, Heather, for putting up with my silly sense of humor and my some my seeming fascination with your loft. I can't help it. I have a very strange fascination with certain architectural designs, lofts turrets <laughs> anything anything that's not unusual but slightly unusual I don't know uh anyway I, I've, I've always wanted a loft maybe someday I will have a loft in a turret is that possible why not I'll make it possible I'll just make up a new architectural design a, a loft in a turret there's no good word combination there is there Somebody come up with a name for me for what a loft in a turret would be. Or is. Maybe it already exists. I don't know. Thank you, Heather. And thank you, as always, to you, my listeners. I hope you have enjoyed this conversation with Heather Mateus Sappenfield. I hope that you will join me for my next interview. Again, a collection of short stories. I always say it's amazing how connected sometimes my interviews can be regardless of the fact that they are scheduled completely independently of one another you know the authors don't know each other or know when they're scheduling and so I find it really interesting this collection of short stories is by author John McNally it is called the fear of everything sounds a little ominous right um but yeah the fear of everything and I will be speaking to John on the next episode If you are a fan of this podcast, and I hope you are, I hope you will help us out by doing a couple of things. First, follow us on social media. You can follow GSMC Book Review Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also write a review or give us a five-star review. I mean, obviously, if you don't think we're five stars, you don't have to give us a five-star review, but five stars would be awesome. Anyway, you can write a review. You can give us a, a starred review. Those really help us to get this podcast out to more listeners such as yourself. And in terms of social media, please do not only follow, but interact with me on social media. I love to hear your questions. I love to hear your thoughts on interviews and the books that you're reading and the authors that I'm interviewing. Just, I I love hearing from listeners. So please do interact with me on social media. I would greatly appreciate it. And I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Again, I hope that whatever you're doing today, you are having a wonderful day and that that day will entail some time to get lost in a good book. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.